We know so much more than we understand, but we know so little. Many believe the white light you see when you die is the supercharged, electric whimper of a desperate and dying brain. Synaptic death, but it's not. Today on the Comic Book Report, Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars. Stick around and check it out. Greetings all, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today, at long last, I finally got to Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars. This 2015 Marvel event is truly epic in scope and unlike anything I have ever read, particularly from this publisher. But just what did I think of Secret Wars? Well, let's get started with today's review. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written by Jonathan Hickman and penciled by Asad Ribic. The issues in this volume were published by Marvel Comics beginning in 2015. The volume itself collects Secret Wars issues 1 through 9 and material from Free Comic Book Day 2015 Secret Wars. This trade paperback edition comes in at 312 pages. At this time, I'd like to issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that standard size trade paperback collection. And the first thing I'll note is when I read this, I realized that this is a British print of this book as the price is in pounds. I'm unclear if the U.S. edition has any big differences, but I just wanted to note that from the outset. This trade paperback has a gorgeous wraparound cover and is filled with a nice, thick, glossy print paper stock. The back cover here, of course, has more of that epic wraparound battle cover. And while this cover art is impressive, impressive too is the art found within the book itself by Ribic. It has a quality that is almost evocative of like a pastel painting of some kind. Hard to describe, but absolutely gorgeous throughout. Now, as I transition into the collection proper, I will make a couple quick notes about my context with The Secret Wars. I will say right from the beginning, I have yet to read Jonathan Hickman's Avengers run, which, to my knowledge, all culminates with this event. I do have the omnibuses pre-ordered coming out next year for the reprints. And I will say I've read all of the Jonathan Hickman Fantastic Four run in omnibus format, and I've reviewed that on the channel as well. And I also recently finished the first Miles Morales Spider-Man omnibus, which led directly into this Secret Wars event as well. I was hoping to read the Avengers run prior to reading and reviewing Secret Wars here, but I just couldn't wait, especially after finishing the Miles Morales omnibus, as I have Volume 2 coming pretty soon, and I wanted to bridge the gap. But if there's enough interest, perhaps after I finish the Avengers run next year, I'll revisit Secret Wars to see if any thoughts have changed after reading all of Jonathan Hickman's runs leading up to this. As far as what you can expect from this event itself, I went in relatively blanked slate. The only things I really knew about this event is that the multiverse, the ultimate universe, everything kind of broke down and only one reality remained by the end of this story, or at least that's what I had heard. I knew that this was the event that rolled in Miles Morales into the Prime 616 Marvel Universe, and beyond that, I didn't really know what to expect. And this book largely opens with a big battle of the converging universes of the Ultimate universe and 616 over Manhattan all the superheroes from both sides kind of fighting and just at the forefront of this epic battle and I think in my mind that's what I thought all the secret wars was going to be naively I thought that that battle was really the battle and the winner would have the main dominating reality what I didn't know is that that was just the beginning of the first issue setting up the secret wars event as we would see it Yes, rather, Secret Wars is really about when Doctor Doom absorbs the powers of the Beyonders and ascends to an almost kind of false deityhood. When the convergence of all the multiverse is happening, Doom grabs all this power and generates one reality, one world, with the 
kind of crumbs and broken pieces of all these different other parts of the multiverse to create one world battle world and in this world he reigns absolutely supreme he has an army of thor henchmen that enforce his kingdoms he set up a bunch of barons throughout his world like mr sinister and the braddock family and so forth and there's so many people within this world that have no memory of what came before they all just know doom as this kind of benevolent all-powerful king and in the midst of that we are kind of tossed in directly after the battle on Manhattan. We have Reed Richards and the Illuminati trying to escape the multiverse convergence. We think that they might have kind of gotten away. Some of them did. We know that Mr. Fantastic lost his family trying to get aboard the Ark. And we don't really know what happened. But the next thing we know, we are on this battle world where Doom is king. And we don't really know what's going on. We're very fish out of water. I was actually concerned that this didn't collect everything. And I was very confused as to what I was even reading. Because beginning with that issue, we are just entrenched in Doom's battle world. And you're trying to understand the context, what you're reading, what's happening, where this is. And again, as you get the fuller scope that this is the world Doom has created from the remnants of all the rest, his battle world where he reigns supreme, we eventually find a crash-landed arc, this one that is populated by the ultimate universe evil Mr. Fantastic, Thanos, Proxima Midnight, and a couple other of these evil henchmen, along with a stowaway in the form of Miles Morales from the ultimate universe. They crash-land on Doom's world after... After years of it being established, they're from the you know main timelines, either the Ultimate Universe or the Central Six One Six Universe. They survived you know the extermination of those multiverses, and they were able to find their way to Doom's planet. Doom sends his Thors along with Doctor Strange, his second in command, to figure out the threat and eliminate them. Anyone who poses a threat to Doom. When Doctor Strange gets there, he realizes what happened, and Miles Morales is taken by Doctor Strange to this other secret Sanctum Sanctorum island that Doctor Strange has, where we find out that there's a second arc. This is the one that contains the rest of the Illuminati, like Namor, Black Panther, Reed Richards, and company. And we realize that Doctor Strange here, Doom's second-in-command, is also the 616 Doctor Strange, who partnered with Doom to help create this remnant, kind of justifying that we need to have something left. And we found out at the last minute that there was an option for Doctor Strange to actually take the power, to share the power, but he didn't believe he could, so Doom took the power. Anyway, Doctor Strange and Miles open up this arc. We realize that Strange knowingly kept his confidants and friends in a kind of state of suspended animation while being loyal to Doom. Of course, the Illuminati and the Marvel heroes are not happy with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange just sacrifices himself and spreads the heroes throughout Battleworld so Doom cannot find them for a moment. Doctor Strange is murdered by Doctor Doom, and Doctor Doom frames the people in the arc. We find out as well that Doom is actually married to Sue Storm, and all the kids believe that they are Doom's son, not Reed Richards. There's no real memory of Reed at all, except for Dr. Doom, who of course is aware that Reed is now walking around Battleworld, and vice versa. Effectively at that point, it's the rest of the remnants from the 616 and Ultimate Universe trying to find a way to overthrow Doom and restore what's left of the world where they can. So Secret Wars, that's kind of the setup. I'm sure that that was a bit convoluted, but effectively Doom is in control and the remaining heroes and villains are trying to set things right, topple Doom's empire, and restore the universe. So, I was very pleased with this story throughout. I think that I will only benefit by reading the Avengers run. I think that that will help fill in a bit of the gaps and maybe lead to more exciting character moments. But, as a big fan of Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four run, it's very evident how key those figures are. I would say that Mr. Fantastic and Doctor Doom are maybe the main characters in Secret Wars. And that was a big surprise for me. I had no idea that that was the setup of Secret Wars and I was just elated. I think that these are very true depictions of the Fantastic Four characters, at least in line with Jonathan Hickman's vision of them. So to have this as kind of a epilogue swan song to Jonathan Hickman's era on Fantastic Four and Avengers, 
That is just chef's kiss. I get why this series is considered so highly regarded. I believe as well that this actually capped the initial Fantastic Four series. I believe after Secret Wars, Fantastic Four was canceled for a time before they were ultimately brought back. And we do have Fantastic Four, the characters kind of in the places they were when they get canceled. Uh, and that is all seen in the kind of the epilogue of this collection as well. In the epilogue, we also have Miles Morales in the main 616 universe along with Peter Parker Spider-Man, establishing a new status quo after the destruction of the Ultimate Universe. There are some big kind of heady ideas as far as the multiverse go within this collection, but I think that overall, Jonathan Hickman really handles gigantic scope narratives exceedingly well. Even looking at his Fantastic Four run, which was just incredible as far as the breadth of storytelling inside it, but it was packaged in such a way that you're along for the ride and you're not too confused. I would say the same thing is true of Secret Wars. A lot happens, there's some heavy concepts, but when you're along for the ride, by the end, everything falls into place and it just works seamlessly. I think that overall, I was really also happy with the art throughout. Like I said, there's this kind of pastel, almost painted quality to the work by Ribic throughout this book. It added kind of a dreamy quality to it as well. I don't know really how to describe it, but that is what I would say. There's a dreamlike quality to this. This feels like myth. This feels like legend playing out before your eyes. And it was very consistent throughout the entire work. I really liked that sense of consistency. It added the extra cohesion to this event that you were never pulled out of it based on the art. You were just glued to watch the storytelling unfold. From the start of this series with the convergence of the multiverse to the epic conclusion with Reed versus Doctor Doom, I think throughout it's very, very strongly written. The character voices are pitch perfect. I think for people reading this, is it accessible for someone that's like a new reader or just picking it up off the shelf? I think yes and no. I think yes, anyone could pick this up and enjoy it for the most part. They do a good job with exposition and giving you information that you do need. However, I think that there is a higher level Marvel event at place here as they're trying to wrap up storylines from Fantastic Four, Avengers, and the whole Ultimate Universe. Because of that, I think that your knowledge of the Marvel Universe would be helpful to have kind of a good background on those series before reading this book. I think particularly characters like Miles Morales, who plays a nice part in this series, it's good to see where he's coming from and understanding his connection to the Ultimate Universe and just generally what the Ultimate Universe is all about to really understand the stakes of Secret Wars. I think also reading Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four really helps establish the central characters to Secret Wars. That reading definitely lent a sense of gravity and tension to this storyline that I don't know if it would have been as present without because the whole time I'm just waiting for this electrifying conflict between Reed and Doctor Doom. And their checkered history makes it all the more epic when you get to that final conclusion. I do feel, as someone who didn't read the Avengers run, that I was missing a couple key points for this book. Like I said, it was nothing that I couldn't fill in myself or kind of go on without, but I'm sure that reading the Avengers run would have made this event even more of a standout. Overall, a fantastic event series here. These 9 or 10 issues were definitely a standout. I think that I was pleasantly surprised throughout, particularly because I didn't know the shape of this actual story. So I felt very transported to this foreign world as I was just watching all of these characters come to life. Loved it. It was a great Marvel reading experience. Thoroughly recommend it. Again, I don't know if the American publication of this trade is any different, but mine has this nice little cover art gallery in the back. Overall, great read. And now it's time for that grade. For an epic culmination of not only the Ultimate Marvel Universe, but also the Fantastic Four and Avengers Hickman run, the comic book report is happy to give Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars an A-. This was an absolute treat and probably the most fun I've had reading in a Marvel event book since I read The King in Black last year. The art was really gripping and absolutely stunning throughout, and the narrative kept me hooked from page one all the way through the end. There was a great deal of surprise here for me, and the world building was absolutely fantastic. For fans of the Marvel Universe at large, as well as fans of fantasy fiction, I highly recommend Jonathan Hickman's Secret Wars. I think that this is probably a must-read for all Marvel fans. But let me know what you thought in the comments below. 
And until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, have a good one.